Hi, Miss Janae. Hi, kids. Hi, Barbara. This Hi. Sweetie hasn't been here in a while. She misses everyone because we were having so many other special guests. So I got her dressed up nice and pretty for her good return. And yeah, there you go. And she's being such a good girl. She hasn't ripped it out of her fur. <laughs> but she's going to sit with us all class. Oh, hi, sweetie. Hi, sweetie. So cute. Uh, thank you. Um, so let's get our lesson started. Right. Yeah? Yeah, of course. The first thing I'll do is light a candle to represent God's eternal presence in our lives. He's always with us. So our, I'm going to put the candle right here next to my computer, and you cannot see it, but it's here. Mm -hmm. um, and Miss Janae, would you open us up in prayer? Yes, of course. Okay. Right down here. Let's uh, close our eyes and bow our heads. And take a breath. Uh, loving God, we get to be in your presence and keep absorbing these uh, really enlightening Bible stories, all these different characters from the book of Genesis and uh, the lessons they learn, they pass on to us. Uh, we are blessed to have beautiful weather here. Um, I'm thankful for everyone who is safe and doing well since we almost had a storm. So we thank you for that blessing. And let's have a fun and informative class today. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So what are we talking about today, Ms. Janae? Well, today is all about fairness and uh, Joseph. Joseph is a very important character in the whole Bible. Uh, and he happens to be the son of Jacob, who we have been talking about the last few weeks. So the reason I'm dressed in bright colors and, and you look a little showy as well, mm -hmm. uh, Joseph was a loud, proud person. Uh, he was one of uh, Jacob's many sons, but he was the favorite. Jake, uh, Jacob, yes, his father. He was not shy about the fact that Joseph was his favorite son. He preferred him over all the other sons. Uh, and that made Joseph's brothers very, very jealous. So just it's like- not Jacob, fair. Not fair. Yeah. Uh, got all kinds of preferred treatment. And to make it worse, at one point, Joseph gave, excuse me, Jacob gave Joseph a special coat. This was a very bright, beautiful coat. And I drew a little picture just to give you an idea. So the Bible says the coat was a tunic with long fleece, and it was specially made out of a, a woven fabric, uh, and it looked like royalty. It wow. Just, it gleamed, it was beautiful. And uh, J Jacob says his other sons, since they worked in the fields as shepherds, it was okay for them to wear something like this, like animal skins. That's all they got to wear. But Joseph walked around with this beautiful, bright coat. So you can imagine how much that made his brothers angry, even more. And probably the angriest they got was when Joseph came to them one day and he said, I had a dream that one day I'm going to be so powerful you all are going to bow down and worship me. You all, I'm going to lord over all of you. What? So when, right. <laughs> when he said that, they told him, you are imagining things. You're delusional. We will never bow down to you. Uh, so that kept everything very tense, you can imagine. And one day, Joseph, uh, excuse me, Jacob the dad had Joseph go out to check on his brothers in the fields. Uh, and the brothers saw that as their opportunity to teach Joseph a lesson. Mm. Most of them actually wanted to have him killed. Oh, no. Brother, right, right. <laughs> one brother named Reuben stepped in. He said, let's not kill him, but let's throw him into a pit and leave him there to give him a taste of his own medicine, you know, teach him a lesson. So that's what they did. They left him there. Mm. Wow. Um, he could have died, but some traders passing by took him out of the pit and sold him into slavery in Egypt. Mm. And that's a very important part of the story because Joseph will go on to lead the ancient Israelites out of slavery, out of Egypt. Uh, and his prophecy, his dream that he will lord over the people will come true. Mm. Yes. 
Uh, so the main idea, though, of this story is fairness. Is it fair that Joseph got special treatment over his brothers? Is it fair that he got this nice coat and his brothers had to wear animal skins? Is that fair? And is it fair that they threw him in a pit? You know, even though he was bragging all the time that he deserved that, probably not. So, but notice after he got thrown into the pit, God was there. God rescued him and took him out. Even though he ends up going into slavery, it was for a reason. He was going to have a very special job in Egypt to free people. Free God. people, yes. Mm -hmm. So God was present the entire time. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So even in an unfair situation, God rescues him and God rescues us out of those difficult situations. Yeah, and sometimes we can't see that being the case until well long after that situation has passed. And we can look back and say, huh, God was there all along and look, this worked out for the best. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So is there a time, Miss Barbara, in your life that you thought you were being treated unfairly, uh, but you could see that God was actually with you and working in your favor? I think so. You know, now thinking back, uh, you know, on a situation with my own brother, I can remember being a teenager and he convinced my parents to get him a sports car. And I was green with envy. I was really jealous. And why does he get a sports car? And that's not fair. But thinking back, um, my parents um, bought me and paid for very expensive accordion lessons and a very expensive instrument. And uh, so it was kind of equivalent. I couldn't see it at the time, but I can see it now. And, you know, now looking back with that uh, instrument, I was able to work, I play music and work and make money and pay for college with that and, you know, with the accordion. So, you know, it all worked out. You know, it, uh, my experiences were useful in my future life and God has always been for me. So how about you, Miss Janae? Have you ever had a situation that was unfair that you felt like uh, mirrors this story somehow? Yeah, so once in middle school, uh, you were not allowed to be late to my middle school. The bell rang at nine o'clock sharp and you had to be inside the main building or they would immediately write you up for detention. You had to go to school on the weekend if you didn't go to class on time. So one day, uh, it was almost nine o'clock, but I had enough time, I thought. <laughs> I stopped to tie my shoes right before going into the, the building and they stopped me and wrote me up for detention. And it wasn't even nine o'clock yet, the bell didn't ring. And I felt that was so unfair, I was so upset. I never had to go to detention before. But the, when I did go to detention uh, that weekend, uh, we had to be there for six or seven hours. My sister gave me a book to read and it turned out to be the most wonderful book. It was called Rules of the Road. It was this award-winning novel. And I read the entire book that day, at, uh, the entire time I was there, I finished the book. And I had a wonderful time in detention. So I thought, <laughs> wow, had I never been late and they made me go here, I would have never read this amazing book. So it turned out to be a very good thing. Wow, cool, very cool. That's a good example. Yeah. So we, so we have a, um, a little play to read for the kids called Joseph the Dreamer. Um, and we'll read it together, Ms. Janae. What do you think? Yes, yes. Okay, so you start. You'll be the broadcaster. I'll be the reporter, and we'll go back and forth. Okay. All right. This story is all about what happens to Joseph when he, his brothers take care of him. Okay. <laughs> so we interrupt our regular programming to bring you an important newsflash. Joseph, the son of Israel, formerly known as Jacob, is missing. For the latest, we go to our on-the-spot reporter. Thank you, Miss Janae. Thank you. I'm with the father of missing youth, Jacob. When did you last see your son? I'm Jacob. Two days ago, I asked him to check on his brothers and their flocks, which are my flocks, really, and report back to me. I haven't heard from him since he left for Shechem. It is quite unusual, and I'm very worried. 
Our reports indicate that he did reach Sechem, but no one seems to know what happened to him after he arrived. Our sources suggest that Joseph was wearing a special coat that you gave him. Could you describe it for our viewers, please? Yes, the coat was a gift from me. It was a beautiful token of my appreciation. It's beautifully woven with long sleeves. My other sons need short sleeves for their work, so animal skins are good for them. Joseph doesn't work with his hands. He is a leader. This coat was my way of supporting his career path. And excuse me, I can't continue this conversation. If anyone out there sees Joseph, please tell him to come home. Well, that appears to be all we have right now. Wait, I see a group of men coming this way. I think they're Joseph's brothers. Please stand by. Hey, I'm Reuben, one of his brothers. Get those cameras away. The news is terrible. He was not supposed to die. It was just a joke, a way of teaching the arrogant kid a lesson. When I went back, he was gone. It's not my fault. You're not making any sense. You sound distressed. Are you accepting responsibility for your brother's disappearance? No, I am not. What gave you that idea? We need to get to our father. Joseph has been attacked by wild beasts and is dead. We have proof. What do you mean? Joseph was coming to check on us. We were tired after a long day and didn't want to listen to his bragging. I suggested we put him in a dry well just to teach him a lesson. But when I went back to rescue him, he was gone. All I found was this blood-stained robe and the wild animals got him. Hmm. The other brothers are standing to one side talking together quietly. So now we're going to tell you what the other brothers are saying. Levi said, that was Reuben's plan all along, wasn't it? He intended to set that dreamer free. Simeon said, don't be too hard on him. He's cleared us from suspicion. Judah said, it's a good thing we decided to sell Joseph to those slave traders. Now we've got money and we won't have to listen to Joseph's constant bragging. Reuben can carry the guilt. A, a job well done, I say. Dan said, at least we don't have to put up with our younger brother lording it over us anymore. Gad said, remember his dream when we were all bowing down to him? Zebulun said, I wonder who is doing the bowing now. And they all. <laughs> and they all laugh. Wow. Well, there's a lot of twists and turns in this story because at the beginning, it does seem that it was unfair that Joseph would be the favored one and would get this beautiful coat and, and the brothers are having to work out in the field. But then Joseph gets put in this pit and sold into slavery. That's a turn. Um, but then Joseph becomes the liberator of the people in Israel. So his role was really important. So his dream really meant something. It is uh, incredible, very incredible. And yeah. He is a special child. <laughs> his brothers may resent it, but he has a special purpose. Yeah. Uh, so the story will continue. We'll learn more about it probably next class. Yes, and we all have a special purpose too. We should say we all have a path and we all have a special purpose and we'll find that out as we go through life. Mm -hmm. And we can rest assured that God is with us. Exactly, perfect. Mm -hmm. perfect. Yeah, so I will go ahead and close uh, because we have run out of time. So if you will bow your head. Dear God, thank you once again for letting us come together and unite right here on Zoom. Um, thank you for keeping us safe for one more week. Thank you for your lessons and your words and for allowing us to know and understand and talk about the fact that you are with us always. Let us feel your presence in our life this week and always. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. okay. And sweetie's here to say goodbye. Okay. There you are. Bye, sweetie. Happy bye, Miss Janae. And bye.